I know this sounds like an amazing arrangement. So instead of charging your client, you charge the insurance company instead for your consults. And your client is thrilled because they're not having to pay for your services. And you're thrilled because you're being paid more per consult than you ever had in your salaried career. So what do you need to get this process going? You need to start contracting with insurance companies. So I'm gonna lay out the five steps that you need to know get this process started. So about seven years ago, I delved into working with insurance companies and I called a dietitian to find out what was all involved. And the short answer is that you just have to go into the insurance company's website and join their network and fill out an application. But the process gets a little bit more complicated because there are certain things that you need to have on hand to fill out the application. So there's five steps that you're going to have to complete in order to become a provider in an insurance company network. So let's go over those five steps today. All right, so let's go over step one. First of all, you'll need to have an NPI number. This stands for National Provider Identification, and it's a unique number, kind of like your social security number, except this is a professional number. This is a number that identifies you as a health professional and it goes wherever you go. So you might have one from a previous job and you may or may not know about it. So you can go to the NPI provider website, type in your name and see if a number pops up. If not, you'll need to apply for one and it can take up to 15 business days to receive one. There's no fee for the application, there's no fee for the number, and once you have it, that NPI number goes on every application that you submit to the insurance companies. And you enter it on every transaction when you submit an insurance claim, so you can't get very far with that one. Step number two is that you'll need a tax ID number. It's like a social security number, except it's tied to your business instead of your personal self. Now you actually can use your social security number, but a lot of people feel more comfortable having another number associated with their business. Again, you enter your tax ID on all of your applications. You enter your tax ID when you're submitting claims. So it's, sometimes it's better to have something aside from your social security number out there. You can go to the IRS website today to fill out a tax ID number. Again, there's no charge for this and you can get your tax ID number today under employee identification number, EIN. That's the number you wanna get. And the third thing that you're gonna need for the insurance application process is liability insurance. In the past, I've gone with Mercer or Pro Liability and they have, rate, they have packages ideal for the dietitian. So you can go to their website today and look at what they have for insurance policies to get your liability insurance active today. And you might qualify for a discount if you're a member of the Nutrition Academy. The fourth thing that you're gonna need is a practice location. So depending on whether you're planning on having an office space available downtown or you're planning on doing telehealth and working from home, you're going to be filling out office location on all of your applications and it's going to become public knowledge once you get in network with the insurance company. So a lot of times if people are planning to do telehealth or working from home, they don't feel comfortable using a home address you might be able to find an alternative to that, such as per diem office space or using an alternate address. One thing is that not all insurance companies allow you to use your home address as your practice address. Some insurance companies are gonna to wanna to ensure that the office address is ADA accessible. So if you don't have a wheelchair ramp or an ADA accessible bathroom, that's gonna be a problem. So that's why I worked out alternative office space locally with a nonprofit. And the way we have arrangements is that it's per diem, so it's as needed. Now, so far I haven't had to need that because I'm doing all telehealth, but that ADA accessible address is what I use on my insurance application. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that you can always change your address. You can add it at a new location. So don't let that slow you down. Find an office location that you can use now and you can always change it later. And the fifth step that you're gonna to need to do to be ready for insurance company applications is to fill out a profile on CAQH website. So CAQH stands for the Council on Affordable and Quality Healthcare. Essentially, it's a database for your information and your practice information, your business information. And so all insurance companies can go to this one central database to verify all the information that they're receiving on your applications. It's a place where you're gonna be able to update your information as things change. It's a place where you're housing all of your current certifications, licensures, and registrations. So it's all housed in one place. 
and it really is, it's, uh, it's verified by you and authorized by you to release this information to the insurance companies. Otherwise, you're set updating insurance companies every time you get a new liability, pol every time you get a new insurance policy or get a new registration date active on your license. So instead of having to update all of these insur insurance companies separately, it's all housed in one place on CAQH where they can go and verify your current information. Most of the insurance companies will ask that you have a CAQH profile filled out and they might ask for a CAQH profile number so they can go ahead and verify during the credentialing process your information. It is a lot of information to upload. It's probably going to take you a good hour, one to two hours to fill out that process, but once it's done, you're only periodically updating your information every quarter and attesting that your information is valid and up to date. And then as you get new certifications or renew other certifications, you're going to be uploading those documents to have them in your profile. So that essentially sums up the five basic steps that you need to get started on the insurance process. And I know as you make your way through the process, a lot of questions come up especially on the different insurance applications. Some of the questions are really confusing. So I wanted to make you aware of the resources that I provide to help other dietitians through this process. Twofold, I have want to have a course. It's about getting yourself started in private practice, just from the transitioning into a full-time position into building up your practice confidently and gradually. And that's called part-time practice, full-time life. It's a self-paced program available to you to get yourself through the insurance process the application process, billing and submitting claims, and above and beyond. So there's a full, um, a full course available with support and coaching with lifetime access. And then additionally, I also offer individualized coaching business mentoring for, our, for RDs, and that is on a monthly basis. So you might find that one is better than the other, but the best place to find out more information about my services is on my website, amyhagerrdn.com. And I'll put a link to my website in the video description below. But now you've got the tools to get going and get the process started. I know you can do it because I did it myself. And be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you feel like it's given you a little bit more clarity on exactly how to get the process started of working with insurance companies. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.